welcome to everybody today i'll be talking about working length determination i'll be talking about this particular topic in the following contents uh, i'll begin with introduction i will go on with the definitions involved in working length anatomy of the root apex clinical significance of working length different methods of working length determination and the most common methods in our clinical practice uh, in radiograph, uh, like such as radiographic and non-radiographic methods. Let us begin with introduction. One of the main concerns in root canal treatment is to determine how far the instrument should be advanced within the root canal and at what point preparation and filling should terminate. Planing, shaping and obturation cannot be accomplished unless working length is determined precisely. Next, uh, coming on to the most common definitions uh, to uh, understand working length uh, concept. Working length is defined as the distance from the coronal reference point to a point at which canal preparation and obturation should terminate. The reference point, it is the site on occlusal or incisal surface from which measurements are made. This point is used throughout canal preparation and obturation. Anatomic apex is defined as a tip or end of the root determined morphologically and the radiographic apex is defined as a tip or end of the root determined radiographically. Next coming on to the major and minor diameter. Now major diameter or apical foramen it is the main apical opening of the uh, root canal. It is frequently uh, eccentrically located away from the anatomic or radiographic apex. Now can you see here this is the uh, major apical uh, diameter. Now coming on to the apical constriction or a minor uh, diameter. It is, uh, it is the apical portion of the root canal having the narrowest dimension. Now can you see in this particular figure. Now this is the apical constriction or a minor diameter. Now, next is a cementodentinal junction. It is a region where the cementum and dentin are united. Now, to understand the cementodentinal junction, as we all know, there's a dentin in the root canal. Now, this dentin meets the cementum of the root apex, and that location where they both unite is called the cementodentinal junction. Next, we will understand the anatomy of the apex. Now, this uh, understanding or this uh, knowledge is very Im important to understand the concept of working length. So, if understood properly, we can establish an accurate working length. So, to understand this particular anatomy of the root apex, we need to know certain components of this root apex. Now, the root apex generally comprises of apical foramen, apical constriction, cementodentinal junction, lateral canals. Then there is a canal curvature and there are different types of root apex. So, uh, I'll be talking about all this under the following uh, slides. <clears throat> Let me begin with the uh, apical foramen. Apical foramen is a rounded edge like a funnel or a crater that differentiates the termination of the cemental canal from the exterior surface of the root. So, this is the apical foramen. Okay, foramen is nothing but an opening as we know in we all have uh, heard about the various foramens in our skull. So uh, to understand it better, it's just an opening of the uh, root towards the apex. Now the location and shape of fully formed apical foramen vary in each tooth and in the same tooth at different periods of life. Next coming to the apical constriction. Now, apical constriction is the narrowest part of the root canal with the smallest diameter of blood supply. As you can see here in this particular figure, it is the narrowest part of the root canal system. Now, preparation to this point results in a small wound site and optimal healing conditions. Means to say that if you try to prepare your canal like a biomechanical preparation or if you try to obturate the root canal to this point, it can create an optimal healing condition. The apical foramen is not always the most constricted part of the root canal. From the apical constriction, the canal, canal widens as, as it approaches the apical foramen. Now, if you can see here, it widens. 
when it approaches the apical foramen. Now this shape is can be compared to a funnel shape or it can be compared to a hyperbolic shape or the shape of the morning, morning glory flower. Next, the important landmark in the uh, root uh, anatomy or uh, root uh, anatomy is the cementodentinal junction. I've already explained about the cementodentinal junction as to what it means. So, uh, it basically means the, uh, the dentin meeting the cementum of the root apex. Now, it is a histological landmark. It cannot be located clinically or radiographically because it is present in the canal system. So, we cannot really determine it uh, morphologically or clinically. Next, coming to the various lateral canals or accessory canals present in the main root canal. Now, the knowledge of lateral canals is very important to determine the uh, working length precisely. So, we need to know the exit, the origin of the uh, lateral canals. So, a lateral canal is located at right angles to the main uh, root canal. You can see here, it is the uh, lateral canal at right angles to the main root canal. Now accessory canal, now here is the accessory canal, it branches off from the main root canal in the apical region and the furcation canal uh, originates in the furcation area. Now these canals are areas for interchange of metabolic and breakdown products between the pulp and the periodontal tissue. So if any uh, disruption of this area or if any infection results in the pulp, which ca it can reach the periodontium, also, the vice versa, if the infection is uh, existing in uh, periodontium, it can reach the pulp. Now, we need to know two important uh, uh, canals, which, which, which is lateral canal and an apical delta. Now, if you can see in this particular radiograph, this is nothing but a uh, lateral canal, which is originating in the right angle direction the main root canal. Now, whereas the apical delta can be seen in the root apex. So, this is a branching pattern of small accessory canals which can be seen at the tip or apex of the uh, some tooth. Now, in this particular radiograph, you can see a mandibular molar showing an apical delta. So, sometimes this apical delta is very critical, okay, to uh, uh, obturate because uh, Sometimes if, if any uh, irritants or bacterial byproducts are there in this particular apical delta, chances of reinfection or uh, it can, uh, you know, the uh, obturation, uh, it, it really uh, determines the success rate of the uh, root canal treatment. Next, moving on to the significance of working line determination. It determines how far into the canal the instruments are placed and work, and thus how deeply the tissues, the debris, and metabolites are removed. Uh, it limits the depth to which the canal filling may be placed. It affects the degree of pain and discomfort that the patient will feel following the appointment. If calculated within correct limits, it will play an important role in determining the success of the treatment and conversely, if calculated incorrectly, may cause the treatment to fail. Next, coming on to failure to accurately determine and maintain the working length. Now, what are the main causes of uh, failure? Suppose uh, the length too long. Now, now, suppose if you have calculated working length and uh, the length of the working length is too long, can lead to perforation through apical constriction. It can lead to overfilling or overextension of the gutta percha points. It can re, uh, uh, lead to increased incidence of post-operative pain. It can uh, lead to a prolonged healing period and low success rate owing to incomplete regeneration of cementum, periodontal ligament and alveolar bone. Now, problems associated with the shorter working length. It can lead to incomplete cleaning, that is, incomplete debridement of the bacteria and its byproducts from the main root canal. It can uh, cause underfilling of the root canal. It can cause a persistent discomfort to the patient. It can cause incomplete apical seal, apical leakage, which supports the existence of viable bacteria and contributes to a periradicular lesion. And also the main factor or main point to be uh, noted here, if the short working length is present in a uh, root canal treatment, it can lead to a lower success rate. 
Now, how to measure working length? Now, measurement should be made from a secure reference point on the ground that can be identified and monitored accurately in close proximity to the straight line path of the instrument. Now, reference points in anterior teeth are usually the incisor edges and in posteriors, they are the cusp tips. The reference point must be definite and reliable point or surface to ensure practice in all subsequent measurements means the reference point should not be changed in but in following appointments so it should be a reliable point now incisal edges or cusp that are undermined or fractured should be ground until a sound surface is attained so the statement means if suppose there is an uneven surface or there is a uh, uh, up and downs in particular incisal edges or a cusp tip so it should be made flattened so that that particular point can be uh, uh, can be used also in the next upcoming appointments coming to the reference point the reference point is the site on the occlusal or incisal surface from which measurements are made a reference point is chosen that is stable and easily visualized during the preparation reference point that will not change during or between appointments is selected do not use weakened enamel or diagonal lines of fracture as a reference site for length of tooth measurement. Weakened cusp or incisal edges are reduced to a well-supported tooth structure. So you can see here uh, there's a, uh, a fractured anterior tooth which, which has made stabilized to, you know, which, which has made uh, even so that a proper attainable reference point is achieved. So uh, this reference point will not be changed in subsequent steps of the root canal treatment. Next, moving on to the different methods of working length determination. Now, there are basically two different types of uh, working length determination, one which involves a radiograph and one which does not involve the radiograph. Now, radiographic methods can be uh, different types. Now, there are uh, so many types which are mentioned here starting with Best's method, Brickman's, Bramante's, Grossman's formula, Engel's method, Wien's method, Cutler's method, radiographic grid, Euclidean endometry, zero radiography, direct digital radiography, subtraction radiography, and endometric probe. Now the most common used radiographic methods in our clinical practice will be either a Grossman's formula, Engel's method, and Wien's method. Whereas non-radiographical methods are becoming more popular as in the current era of practicing anodontics, which can be digital tactile sense, apical periodontal sensitivity, electronic apex locator, and paper point method. So in this, the electronic apex locator with the different generations of uh, apex locator available, it is becoming easier for us to accurate, uh, accurately determine the working length. Now, let us understand the most commonly used radiographic methods first and then we will move on to non-radiographical methods. Now, this is the basic idea of radiographic uh, method of uh, determination of working length. Now, in this particular uh, uh, slide, you can understand there is a radiograph which will be exposed, that is, that operative radiograph will be exposed and then uh, uh, files will be uh, placed in the root canal and then one more radiograph will be exposed and with the addition or subtraction principle we can accurately determine the working length. Now there are two techniques of radiography which is involved in uh, uh, our, our determination of working length. The first technique is paralleling technique and the next technique is by now, I'm not going to the oral medicine aspect or oral, uh, with oral radiology aspect to uh, give you the insights about the both the techniques. So, uh, the whichever technique is feasible to our uh, practice or wherever you are uh, uh, practicing uh, the uh, or or you or you or you want to calculate the working length, you can choose the either of the uh, technique. Now coming to the Grossman's method, in Grossman's method, it uh, involves a series of radiographs, which can be a preoperative radiograph and, a, and uh, placing the file inside the canal and taking a radiograph later on. 
So the correct length of the tooth can be determined by the Grossman's formula. It can be uh, the uh, it, it can be uh, uh, calculated by correct length of the uh, tooth is equal to known length of the instrument in the tooth into apparent length of the tooth on the radiograph. That is after exposing the uh, uh, radiograph uh, while placing the file on the uh, uh, on the root canal in the root canal. But divided by apparent length of the instrument on the radiograph. So with this formula, you can calculate the uh, working length of the tooth. Next, which is the most commonly uh, used in our clinics is Ingalls method. Now this method is very simple. Like first, uh, uh, we have to measure the tooth on the preoperative radiograph. So this is the first step wherein you measure the tooth length in the preoperative radiograph then you subtract 1 mm as a safety allowance for possible image distortion or magnification and then you place the uh, file now in suppose uh, this particular length of the tooth is 23 mm now we have subtracted 1 mm and we uh, adjust the length to be 22 mm and with this uh, this file the endodontic file is placed in the root canal and one more uh, radiograph is exposed now another uh, radiograph, uh, on the other radiograph, measure the difference between the end of the instrument and end of the root end and add this amount to the original measure length. Now suppose if the uh, uh, if the instrument is at the apex, there will be no need to uh, change the uh, root canal length. Uh, if suppose there is a difference in the length, like suppose if the if you find that okay there is a one mm short of the length, you can you can adjust it according to the uh, the preoperative radiograph. If the instrument has gone beyond the apex, subtract this difference from the adjusted length of the tooth and subtract a 1 mm. Now, a uh, safety factor to confirm with the apical termination of the root canal at the apical constriction. Now, the safety factor is nothing but you have to subtract 1 mm from the actual length of the tooth. That is only because that uh, major and minor diameter are always separated by a distance of 0.5 to 1 mm. So we always give a safety allowance of 1 mm. Now suppose you calculate the uh, working length in the radiograph and it is uh, and it is 23 mm. So for the safety factor, you need to subtract 1 mm and you need to keep your working length as 22 mm. Okay, uh, that is about the uh, Engels method of uh, working length determination. Now for this, Wien has given some modifications in a length subtraction. Now he says that if there is no resorption in the uh, first uh, pic uh, picture, you can see if there is no resorption, if there is an optimal periapical condition, you can subtract 1 mm. And suppose if there's any peri periapical uh, bone loss present, you can subtract 1.5 mm. And if there is any periapical bone loss with root apex resorption, you can subtract 2 mm. So these are the veins modification, which is very, very, very important for us to know wherein uh, in those particular three conditions to subtract how much length from the main uh, calculated working length. Now, according to Cutler, what he has told is like anatomy of the root apex. Uh, he has divided or he has uh, given some facts about the distance between the major minor diameter, the apex of the tooth and the minor diameter. So the main point to be remembered here is the distance between the major and minor diameter is 0.5 mm in 18 to 25 year old and 0.7 mm in, 50, in uh, 55 years or above, okay? And the distance between one and three, that is the apex and the uh, uh, minor constriction is in the range of 0.1 to 2.7 uh, mm, okay? So it can, it can be from very minimal to maximum of 2.7 mm. Now coming to the advantages and disadvantages of this radiographic method, the advantages of uh, advantages being it, you can see the anatomy of the tooth, you can see if any curvatures of the uh, tooth uh, uh, roots present, if present, it can see a relationship between adjacent teeth and anatomic structures. Disadvantages being it varies with different observers, observers 
it it uh, it can superimpose the anatomical structures <clears throat> it can give a 2d view of a 3d object and uh, it it leads to a radiation exposure it cannot interpret if a pical foramen has buccal or lingual exit and also it has limited accuracy so with all these disadvantages kept in mind uh, the researchers have gone from radiographic to non radiographic so now we will see the most commonly used methods in our clinical practice, which involves you know, radiography. The first one is digital tactile sense. Now this method is very simple method wherein with the digital tactile sensation, we can feel the apex of the root. Okay, with, you can just take a file and you can just feel the apex of the root. And also to keep in mind, this comes with experience. Suppose if you have an experience, you can really feel the root apex. So uh, you can try it out in the uh, extracted tooth models, and then you can try it out on the patient. So advantages being for this method, it is a time saving and there's no radiation exposures, but also there are some disadvantages. Suppose in cases of a narrow canals, one may feel increased resistance as the file approaches the apex. Also in cases of teeth with immature apex, the instrument can go periapically 2 to 3 mm beyond. In case of anatomical variations in apical constriction or sclerosis or resorption, and age, this method becomes unreliable. So this method should be considered supplementary to high quality, carefully aligned parallel working length radiograph or an apex locator. So this is a supplemental method. Next is the periodontal sensitivity test. This method does not provide accurate readings. For example, in case of narrow canals, instrument may feel increased resistance in apical 2 to 3 mm. Now, this periodontal sensitivity test is mainly a test wherein you can uh, uh, get the patient's response of pain. Suppose when you put a file inside the tooth, now you can uh, proceed or you can advance your file to a point wherein patients ask you to stop it because if uh, it will be a very painful for him to uh, experience that particular uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, situation so this also can be used as a supplemental method in uh, uh, working length determination Next is the paper point measurement method. This method, however, may give unreliable data. If the pulp is not completely removed, uh, like suppose uh, this is nothing but uh, using a paper point and we can place it in the canal. So if you can advance this paper point to a point wherein you can see a bleeding or suppose in the apex of the root canal, when the, 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 there's a, a bleeding point, the it, it it, it makes the uh, working length determine accurately. Suppose, um, I can give you an example that suppose in a patient wherein you have extirpated the pulp correctly, you can place this paper point and this paper point when it reaches the apex, uh, there is a bleeding point noted. So that is how we measure the working length in this particular method. But this method uh, cannot be reliable if suppose the tooth is pulpless and, and a periapical lesion uh, rich in blood supply sperm because if such thing is there, the entire paper point will become red in color. Also, if the paper point is left in canal for a long time, it gives you an unreliable result. Next, coming on to the electronic apex locator. Uh, in addition to radiography, tactile sensation has been used with questionable success. Plus, the drawbacks cited about radiographic length determination, the introduction and development of apex locators was received with enthusiasm. These devices do not assess the position of the root apex and the uh, name electronic apex locator is not appropriate. Electronic apical foramen locator or electronic uh, root canal length measurement device as a generic name would be more appropriate. So it's basically a electronic device which can be uh, used to determine the uh, apical uh, foramen or minor constriction using electric current. So we will understand the mechanism of how it you know accurately determines the uh, uh, root length. It uses the human body to complete an electrical circuit. One side of the circuitry is connected to an endodontic instrument that is 
uh, here as you can see one side is connected to an endodontic instrument and the other side uh, to the patient's body so this is the other side which is a lip or a chin or a buccal mucosa here and is connected to the patient's body <clears throat> The patient's clip or by an electrode held in the patient's hand. Okay, you can also uh, make patients uh, hold it or keep it in his hand. Now, the functionality is based on the fact that the electrical conductivity of tissues surrounding the apex of the root is greater than the conductivity inside the root canal system provided the canal is dry. Now, the uh, length of this is measured by the electrical difference between the canal, the canal conductivity of the current in the canal and also in the periapex. So, differences in this both situation will lead to a determination of a point wherein uh, you can uh, look at the minor constriction. The parts of the apex locator. Now it has four parts. It is the lip clip, the file clip, the electronic device, and the cord which connects about three parts. Coming to the uses of apex locator, it provides objective information with high degree of accuracy. Uh, if there are suppose any overlapping roots in cases of mandibular or maxillary molars, it can uh, accurately. Uh, Mind the working length. If there is an excessive bone density present in the apical portion of the root, it can uh, accurately determine the working length. It can be used in patients with gag reflex and cannot tolerate X ray films. It can be used in pregnant ladies to reduce the radiation exposure. It can be useful in children, disabled patients, heavily sedated patients, etc. So, these are the basic uses of the apex locator. The conditions for the accuracy of electronic apex locator can be uh, like basic conditions to uh, for accurately uh, it it uh, it has to be present to accurate uh, for the accuracy of this particular apex locator. The canal should be relatively dry. The canal should be free from debris. There should be no cervical leakage. There should be no blockage or calcification of canals. There should be proper contact of file with the canal walls and the periapex. Are the basic conditions required now coming to the different generations of electronic apex locator with uh, some of the examples now coming to the first generation it was mainly uh, the principle the main principle involved in its working was resistance so it used to uh, determine the resistance between the flow of the current in the apex and the, the root canal system so the examples were endometer as the dentometer then um, also, there is a Kofingen uh, by Denmark company. Next was second generation was impedance. Now, impedance, uh, the principle involved here is impedance, uh, which was used. And the examples being the uh, Sono Explorer and Digipex 2. Whereas the third generation is the frequency, which is uh, most commonly used in our clinical practice, uh, wherein it, 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 it gives you a, a different frequencies in the uh, root canal and also in the apex. So the most common example for this can be the ND5000, also the index or apt, apt, uh, apex locator. <clears throat> The next being uh, the fourth generation apex locator, it, it has dual frequencies which are involved uh, to accurately determine the working length. It can be uh, root ZX and Propex 2. Fifth generation, it involves the multiple frequencies and it is one of the recent advanced uh, type of an apex locator which determines the root apex 90, with 99.9% uh, accuracy. And the last being the sixth generation or an adaptive type of apex locator. So this is still under the research stage, but soon the days are not far that we can get an apex locator which can accurately determine and which can replace the radiographic method. Finally, the conclusion, the minor diameter is a practical and anatomic termination point for the preparation and obturation of the root canal, and this cannot be determined radiographically. Modern apex locators can determine this position with accuracies greater than 90% but with some limitations. No individual method is truly satisfactory in determining endodontic working length. Therefore, the combination of the methods should be used to assess the accurate working length determination. So that's all about the working length determination. I thank all of you to attending or listening to this lecture. Thank you.